from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in Melbourne, where I've been catching up with friends and family in between work assignments because I'm going to be swapping cricket commentary for tennis commentary very soon. And I also want to thank my little cousin Sam for making me a belated birthday cake in the shape of a cricket bat. And very clever it was too because he used jelly snakes to make stripes of the grip on the bat handle as well. I've also been enjoying following England's test team from afar whilst keeping track of events in the UK COVID-wise and very pleased to learn that my parents are receiving their first dose of vaccine in the UK. So some light perhaps in this COVID tunnel. Uh, well, you'll be making a racket at the tennis for sure, Ali. We know that. But uh, in uh-huh, Sydney, <laughs> where I am at the moment, uh, Jim Maxwell reporting to you that at last, after 56 games and a final series, Cricket's Coliseum Carnival, otherwise known as the BBL, comes to an end. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the finals. I don't know about you. <laughs> Well, in our part of the world, there's a bit of a lull before the next international cricket storm. And uh, there's a bit of a lull in my life as well because I've developed, oh gosh, I hate it, a golf elbow, would you believe it? So I'm mopping around, making a nuisance of myself at home. Terrible. But I hope to get back to it soon. But of course, England are in India, so uh, that will take all the attention. But in this little interim, we've got uh, our uh, Sayed uh, Ali tournament going on. Sayed Mushtaq Ali T20 tournament, where Karnataka, our state, which actually won the tournament quite a few times the last two or three years, has been unceremoniously dumped out. But I'm glad there was some domestic T20 action. And of course, uh, all the attention will very quickly go back to international cricket. Great having England in India. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the England-India series as well, Cherry. In fact, later in the programme, we're going to be joined by the architects who've designed and constructed the largest cricket stadium in the world. And that is in India, the Matera Stadium in Ahmedabad. And if you thought Eden Gardens or the MCG was big, well, move over and welcome to the party, Motera. It's going to be hosting the third and fourth test matches between India and England. That series starts next week. But first, let's reflect on what was an impressive test series win by England in Sri Lanka. One to win. He flicks it away through mid-wicket. There it is. Sibley hits the winning run. A triumph for him and a huge relief as well after the problems that he has had in this series. England have won by six wickets. So there, Dom Sibley hitting the winning runs as England wrapped up a 2-0 series win. They've now won five tests away from home in a row, which is something an England team hasn't done in over a century. Admittedly, a bit of a gap between these last two and the first three back in January 2020 pre-pandemic in South Africa. But Captain Joe Root was player of the series after scoring a mammoth 426 runs across the two matches. But despite that, he says there's still room for improvement for both him and the team. It would have been nice to be there, not out at the end today. Um, pretty disappointed not to see his home, but I've just got to keep looking to improve, keep looking to get better. We know we're going to have different challenges uh, and services to contend with when we get to India, so it's about trying to kick on from now, not, not be happy with what we've done, me personally, but the team as well. So what do you reckon, Charu? England winning on the spinning tracks of Sri Lanka. Good preparation for the upcoming India series, wouldn't you say? Yes, but without any disrespect <laughs> to the current Sri Lankan team, they're not world beaters. Yes, they were playing at home, but they didn't quite mm. have the troops, not in terms of batting, nor the fast bowling department. So I think England are going to face a very different team uh, very soon in India. And uh, in terms of batting, particularly in the fast bowling out, uh, outfit, uh, despite the fact that maybe or oh, there are still some injuries in the Indian team, but I think they have shown enough depth and character uh, in Australia to now be less worried about the fact that their first 11 has still two or three players, key players missing. But it's going to be a lot rougher than Sri Lanka, Joe. So we'll see how you go. <laughs> yeah, very different proposition, isn't it? Um, speaking of Joe Root then, Jim, he scored 42% of England's runs this series, which is the, here's a good stat for you, the third highest proportion in test history. Uh, he dominated. and Maybe that's something to be conscious of for the England team that uh, Roots did an awful lot of the work but he'd had a difficult 12 months with the bat going back over the English summer but now he seems to be returning to those levels set by the likes of Steve Smith, Virat Kohli and Kane Williamson. Does this mean the the big three is back to the big four? Well I hope so not just from England's viewpoint that's obviously important but 
the game's better when good players are, are in form and scoring prolifically. And uh, I hope for Joe's sake that uh, that continues right through the year. There's a lot of cricket to be played. When's he going to be rested? Mm, that'll be interesting. Uh, maybe they'll rest him for the Ashes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> well, England have already travelled on to India for their four-match test series against the team who recently returned from an historic overseas win in Australia. Uh, England have shuffled their pack. Mark Wood, Sam Curran and Johnny Bairstow arrested for the first two tests, while Joss Butler returns home after the first test. As selectors look to manage what is a heavy workload, England are playing 17 tests this year. Into the camp, though, come Ben Stokes, Jofra Archer and Rory Burns, who all missed the Sri Lanka series. Rory Burns missed it because he was becoming a father for the first time and he joins us on Stumped. Rory, welcome to the show and congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. It's good to be here. Yeah, and how was it, first of all, coming away after having become a father and how's everyone doing back home as well? Yeah, mum and Cora are doing very well. Uh, she's Cora, a little girl. So yeah, it was, it was quite a difficult leave. Um, in many respects, it's normally a lot easier just to leave... Uh, Victoria at home because I know she's gonna be all right but um yeah they've got some good support back home and it was uh yeah a tough thing to do but it's the right thing to do yeah good 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 you're already in Chennai that's where you're quarantining ahead of next week's first test match so are you managing to sort of keep in touch in terms of I mean I suppose the time difference means actually night feeds you're you're almost you're almost <laughs> in the right time zone are you yeah, I'm on a very good time zone, I think. Um, <laughs> Victoria's been up quite late through the night a lot of times. So, um, yeah, it coincides with the morning out here. So um, there's been a lot of chat back and forth and a lot of seeing Cora, which is uh, which has been really nice. Sounds great. Now, on cricket-wise, I mentioned that Johnny Bairstow and Joss Butler are missing parts of, of this tour, even though they were in good form with the bat in Sri Lanka. Um, India came through Australia, obviously, as a weakened squad because they lost players due to countless injuries. Now, Kevin Peterson, I know you know him well through your, your Surrey days, of course, and Surrey time together. But notably, he's one person who said that it's somewhat disrespectful almost to travel to India without a full strength side. Is that a fair way of looking at it, do you think? Um Probably not. I think you've got to look at it from the aspects that you're actually managing players' workloads and you're treating individual cases as they are. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch quite a lot of that India-Australia series um, <laughs> with the time difference and, and when I was up through the night. So um, it, was a, it was a great series to watch and by no means would we be underestimating India in any way. Um, they're probably the number one side in the world at the moment, um, particularly in their own conditions. And they've just proven back-to-back -back away series wins in Australia. Um, again, with a weakened outfit. So no, I don't think... We're coming here being disrespectful at all. I think we understand the challenge completely. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go our best to go about it. It's Jim Maxwell in Sydney, Rory. Congratulations on your uh, enlarged family. That's wonderful news. And it sounds like you've been squeezing in a fair bit with your life. Watching cricket from Australia and no doubt from Sri Lanka. And you must have been impressed, as everyone else was, with Joe Root's outstanding form as well as 50s from Dom Sibley, Dan Lawrence and Joss Butler. For you, though, and Ollie Pope and Ben Stokes coming back in, it shows there's a lot of competition for places in this England side now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's something that's probably been spoken about a lot in the last few years. That's sort of the journey the Weibull side went on and, the, you know, the squad they built up to have a pretty difficult decision to try and get that down to 15 for a World Cup. I think, you know, as a test side, we're trying to do the same thing. Like we say, we just highlighted in India how important it was that they had such a good squad. And I think us, you know, building that as a test group is a, is a really good thing. So I think, you know, the competition can only improve us as a team. So what sort of pressure does that put on you at the start of this tour um i don't, don't think it does because i haven't had many conversations about what's going on but um you know for me uh you know watching how the boys went about it in sri lanka um you know watching Bruti get all those runs and you know seeing sibo in that last test stand up in that last innings and, and make a really gritty 50 that you know was you know a really good innings in the context of the game i think it's just a really good thing to see i want to be part of that competition um you know, I like the fact that we're all trying to get as better and try and develop as much as we can. So just to, you know, be around it, throw my name back in the, my hat back in the ring. Um, you know, obviously missed that due to, you know, being at home for the birth of my first child. Um, it's just a really good thing. I think competition is only going to help us improve. Well, Rory, hi, this is Charu Sharma from not too far away from where you are in Bangalore, which, uh, of course, has decidedly better weather. But uh, you may be touching Bangalore later on the tour. We'll see. 
Uh, nothing can, of course, match the joy of the addition to your family and congratulations on that. But on the other hand, you've been away since, what, August now. You haven't really played any cricket and you are going to be facing India in India with the kind of bowling attack that just you know, showed a lot of depth and character in Australia. So just to carry on that whole business about pressure, how does it make you feel individually? You'd probably get three or four days with the whole squad anyway to train. Uh, well, no, it's not ideal prep, was it? Um, you know, it's probably what, not what we'd choose to, but, you know, I've been around for a little while now and I suppose it's experience that I've got to draw on. Um, I actually played into October because uh, we got to the 2020 finals as a Surrey group. So although it was a white ball, still hitting balls there. I've managed to keep up my hitting in and around, uh, you know, this winter period. So there's a, there's a number of balls hit there. It's just about getting out into Indian conditions. And like I say, it's going to be a challenge. Um, luckily, I've managed to face a couple of the guys before in the Indian setup. So um, not going in completely blind. And uh, yeah, it's probably about just drawing on that experience in these shortened periods that we've got to work with. All right, Rory, welcome to India. You know, you are playing India in India for the very first time. And just the way the Indians have gone about their business the last few years, do you think, uh, or do your mates as well think, that maybe playing India in India is the ultimate test cricket challenge these days? <laughs> it's certainly a very big challenge, isn't it? I think I was reading some stats on it the, uh, the other day. It was something like 28 out of 32 tests, I think, something like that, that they've won in recent times uh, at home. So, yeah, I think we all appreciate uh, how big a challenge it's going to be, but it's, you know, it's exciting to go and take on, you know, probably the best side in their own conditions. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on All India Radio. Now, after beating Australia on the pitch... India have also beaten the Aussies when it comes to building the world's biggest cricket stadium. The Matera Stadium in Ahmedabad will host international cricket for the first time next month when India take on England in the third and fourth tests of their series. The new stadium, that is. It can seat 110,000 spectators, so 10,000 more than Melbourne's iconic MCG. The stadium was first built in 1983 before it was demolished in 2015 and completely rebuilt at an estimated cost of 100 million US dollars. I was last there in 2012, so I'm excited to hear just how different this new stadium is going to be. Himanshu Wade is from the Architects Populous, who designed and reconstructed the new stadium. Himanshu, welcome to Stumped. Thanks for having me, guys. It's good to get in touch with you. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Now, this moment of the, the stadium opening, it's been six years in the making, hasn't it? And, and it's a shame it won't obviously be full for the launch. I'm sure you didn't imagine launching it in the midst of a global p pandemic. But were there a few challenges along the way to completing it? Well, uh, the first and the foremost challenge was, of course, the, the size. You know, it's not Motera, majestic Motera, as they call it. You know, the sheer size of, uh, you know, fitting in 110,000 people. You know, it's a challenging task itself, you know. Uh, another one is to uh, just continue the legacy and the history associated to the Motor Cricket Stadium, you know, which dates back to you know early 80s, where the where Sunil Gavaskar scoring becoming the first cricketer to get 10,000 runs in Test cricket, or Sachin Tendulkar becoming the first ever cricketer to score 18,000 runs in ODI cricket. So you know, uh, it's always uh, you know a challenge to reconstruct uh, a stadium which has such a history and culture related. Himanshu, hi, this is Charu Sharma uh, from Bangalore. I can't wait to get to Motera and uh, probably do some cricket there. But I have many questions. I'll limit them to two. For, for starters, you know, there's a move in many ways to reduce capacity in these large stadiums. The Eden Gardens is a lot uh, smaller than it used to be at 100,000. And even Bangalore, the stadium has reduced a few seats. So to the 1K, etc. So what led to this thought process of let's make the world's biggest cricket stadium? What was the thought behind all of that? But, uh, it was uh, also apart from the client brief. Uh, we always wanted to, uh, you know, maintain the the huge cultural uh, and the the uh, cricketing history, the legacy behind, you know, the the, the Motera venue has, and also, you know, we we are 1.3 billion uh, people, you know, <laughs> and everyone know. <laughs> is a huge huge fan. You know, if you talk about the numbers, you know. It's uh, 110,000 people is still quite a small number, to be honest. If you look at the, the map of India, uh, we don't have a, a, a big venue which can have such number of people anywhere. And, you know, if you talk about Gujarat, which, you know, people, they, they are big, big fans. And 
you know, there's also a rumor, you know, that Kuchar is going to bring in another IPL team, which, you know, we're looking at. These are some of the, the reasons, the, the, the facts which we've, you know, paid attention to. And, you know, that's why we came up with the number. All right, you know, make a good point about that. And of course, I do hope that Jadeja gets fit soon enough because he's such a big local hero. There's Jar and others as well. But, you know, unfortunately, it does look like there may not be too many fans present uh, due to the current COVID problems. And I wonder what that will do to the atmosphere of such a large ground in terms of the reverberation and everything else. And I must quickly ask, you know, it's one thing to make, build a stadium. But as perhaps you know, and as I certainly have experienced, the maintenance of stadiums in India are... Well, there's, there's a lot to be said there. And, and, and the facilities for the spectators, you mentioned a few, but almost always stadiums tend to lack the amount, the number of facilities that, that a large number of spectators need. So uh, may I presume that all that has been catered to? You know, major health or safety decisions, they, they, are, they are really, you know, uh, serious steps, uh, you know, when you think about it. You know, flexibility and keeping ahead of trends is really important. It's really important to us, you know, and we've made sure that we, uh, you know, we come up with the best solutions, you know, not about decreasing the overall capacity. But if you, I, I'll take you back to the last year when we had the Namaste Trump event, you know, which held almost uh, 10,000 people extra. So uh, it's not about uh, decreasing the number, but, you know, the flexibility and, you know, uh, we bring all of the learning together from various sports and we make sure that we do, we not only cater to a single sport, but to the aspects mm. of the sports, you know, the fan experience. Yeah, it'll be immense. It would be immense. Thank you so much for telling us about it, Hermanshu. Great to have you on Stumped. Well, thank you, guys. Well, that's it for this week's Stumped here on All India Radio. Stay in touch with us on Twitter via at BBCWS Sports and use the hashtag BBC Stumped. Thanks to my co-hosts, Chari Sharma and Jim Maxwell, and to you for listening. Join us again next time. Bye-bye. Stumped is a BBC sport production for the BBC World Service in association with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and All India Radio.